All right, so today we've got two separate topics that we're going to talk about. One is how do you create a circular SVG progress meter? So little circle and the progress fills the bar around the outside edge of the circle. So that's one part of it. And then as a practical application, how do we tie measuring the progress of a download to that? So as we download a large image, we want to display what percentage of the download has taken place. So that's what we're going to bring together today. All right, first of all, I've got uh, some variables that I've set up that I'm going to use in my CSS here. So background color, this will be the background circle. The focus color will be the uh, progress circle that goes around on top of the lighter blue here. Then we're going to have text inside to inside the middle of the circle, we're going to say what percentage downloaded we are. So we're going to use a, a different color for that. Then we're going to have a variable for the percentage that we'll use in our calculation in our CSS, a size, which will be the height and width of our SVG element on the page, and then the circumference. We're going to actually calculate this. So let's jump down into the HTML here. I've got just a, a few little basics set up to begin with. So in the main element, here is my SVG. This is going to be the progress meter. And then inside my output paragraph, I'm going to write what percentage downloaded. And then this image right here will be where we load the image once we finish downloading it. So we're going to use JavaScript to download the image. We're going to use fetch to download it. And then we're going to actually use a reader to read that stream of data as it's coming in to calculate the percentage so that we can display the information here as text and also update our SVG. So let's start with the SVG. Inside of here, there's three parts that we're going to need. We're going to need the background circle, the progress circle, and the text. So those, simply enough in SVG, mean that we're going to have two circle elements and they can be closing like this or they can even be a self-closing element like that. So we need two of those. And we're going to need a text element, which this is going to display the percentage, something like this. So we have to place these things. We have to say, where do we want it? Now, to place it, we need to know how big our SVG or what portion of the SVG artboard we're going to be displaying. And to do that, we define it with the view box attribute. So inside of here, so in the artboard, if you picture the background of the SVG like it's a sheet of graph paper, from 00, zero being the top left-hand corner. So these are the coordinates. So we're going to say from there to 100, 100. So x, y, height, uh, width, height. Those are going to be the dimensions of the SVG that we're creating. So elements here can go anywhere, inside or outside of this view box, but that is the portion of the SVG that we want shown on the screen. So everything that we do inside of here is going to be relative to this 100 by 100 pixel square that we create. Then in our CSS, we can size the SVG anything we want and everything will be relative. So this size variable right here that I've got set at 150 pixels, my progress class is this SVG element. And we're going to say, okay, it's 150 by 150, or we could change this one variable and it will change the size of the display. Now, inside of here, we have to say how big we want these things within this 100 by 100 pixel square that we've created. So my CX, my center X position, if it's 100 pixels wide, we'll say the center of the circle is 50 pixels and CY 50 as well. There we have our circle is centered and the radius of the circle so we'll say r equals 40. So it's going to be 80 pixels across. The radius is 40, so the diameter is 80. And do the exact same thing for the other one. So both circles are going to be the same, but we're going to style them differently. We're going to give them different colors, and we're going to give a different stroke width. Now, when it comes to working with SVG in CSS, or directly here with attributes inside of the HTML, inside the SVG, um, everything is either a stroke or it's a fill. 
So the fill is the color on the inside, the stroke is the outer edge, and then you can set different widths and so on on those. We're just going to have no fill with a stroke color, a stroke width on the outside edge. So we have to target these somehow in our CSS. Let's give them classes. So the circle progress we'll call it. And this other one will be the circle background. There we are. And our text, we're going to want to target that one as well. So we'll say the class for this one, PCT text. There we go, percentage text. For this one, depending on how big you make the text, you're going to want to position it differently. So I'm going to say X is 50. And I'll say Y is 60 for now, and then we can play around with those numbers. So it's going to be shown there. Now if I open it, there we go. There's the default. So the fill is black, the stroke is black for both the bottom circle and the one on top. So the background and the progress and the text is black on top of this. So no colors, all you get is a black circle. Makes sense. So let's start adding some styles. Come up in here and we'll say okay, circle background and circle progress. There we are. So those are the three parts that we're going to want to have. For the text, let's use our color. So the fill for the text, we'll take our text color variable. For the progress circle, we're going to use a stroke on this one, which will be the variable focus color. And for this one, the stroke will be BG color. Okay, now I haven't defined a width. I haven't defined the fill. So the fill, you can see, is still the black. And there's a little bit of blue there, kind of make it out, but let's get rid of the fill on both of these. So we'll say fill is none for both of those. There we are. So here's the blue stroke on top of the gray stroke. And then there's the orange text as it's placed right now. That's this color right here is the orange for the text. We're going to bump up the font size here. Let's say that this is going to be, oh, let's make it quite big. It's 100 pixels for the circle. So we'll say 40 pixels is good for the text. We're going to want to move it over slightly into the middle. So that actually can be done. Unlike with regular CSS where you're doing it in a line center, with SVG, the text anchor is where do you want to start writing the text? So as you add text, it's going to spread out from the middle. Instead of it being anchored to the left or the right side, we're starting in the middle. And as the text grows, it's going to expand evenly. So this is like centering the text. So we do that and we can see, there we go, the, the 100 is centered. Now we're a little bit high, we can play around with that number, but that's fine. All right, now the circles, we've got the two different colors, but if this one's here, I can't see this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand this one a little bit by changing the stroke width. So the stroke width, I'm gonna set on the background to be 10 pixels. That's the thickness of the line. And then for the progress, we'll make it a little bit smaller than that. We'll say, let's say six pixels. There we go. So it's kind of a, a ring of blue, which has the other color on the inside and outside of that. So as this goes around, it'll be covering up more and more of the gray, but just a nice little effect. We can bump this down a little bit for the, uh, the text. And let's shift this down just a few pixels. Let's go 63. There we go. That's closer to vertically centered as well. All right, so this is basically what we're going to use for the SVG progress meter. Now, we want to be able to only display part of this. So as it's filling, I don't need the entire circle. 
Now, luckily, there is a property called dash array that you can use with a circle. So anything that you're using a path. So here I'm applying the stroke around this. It's kind of like a path around the circle. We're going to define it for the circle progress here. So let's say we've got a stroke dash array. What we're going to do here is we're going to provide values to use. So it's like you're drawing a dotted or dashed line along this path. So if I say, hey, it's 50, we can see, OK, it's 50 pixels, and then it's 50 pixels off, and then 50 pixels, 50 pixels off, 50 pixels. This is how we're going to control the progress, is by controlling how much of the entire circumference we're going to show. So I want to say that one unit is going to be the exact same as the entire circumference of our circle. So how do I know exactly how long that is? You know, my circle's going to change size. Well, back up here where we define this circumference variable, this is what we're going to use. And with any circle, the circumference is just diameter times pi. So if we grab a calculator here, we say, how big was our circle? Well, our radius is 40, so the diameter is 80. It's just double that. So 80 times pi, 251.33 pixels is going to be inside this view box, this 100 by 100 view box at a one to one scale. This is how long the circumference is. So I'm going to save 251.33, just rounding it up. So right here. 251.33, that is the circumference. So if I set my stroke dash array, the length that I'm going to be using for on, off, on, off is going to be the same as the circumference. So there's my circumference. And now, there we go, it's filling in 100%. So that is exactly one time around the circle. Okay, great. Now, how does this help us? We have to be able to turn it or start that one time around at a different point. And to do that, we use our property called stroke, stroke dash offset. This is the property that we want. So this is how far offset. If I set this to 50, I've pushed 50 pixels back. So I've gone back 50 pixels. And then the bigger that number gets, the more I'm going to be pushing around here. So I'm going to do a calculation. Instead of just hard coding it as 50 pixels or providing that number, we're just going to say, let's do a calculation. We're going to take the circumference, so var circumference minus the circumference again multiplied by the percentage loaded. So times var percentage divided by 100. So if my percentage is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, divide that by 100, it becomes like 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. So it's an actual percentage times the circumference. So you subtract this percentage value from the full and that is going to give me my offset, which is what's going to give us this progress. So there we go. So right now we're at zero, and this will slowly fill up. Okay, so we have the basic elements in place now. We have our text value here. Now this is going to start off as a zero. We've got our two circles, and then the styling will give us the colors layered on top of each other. And this simple calculation, all I have to do is change the value of this percentage in my JavaScript. I can set a new value on this progress element. I'm going to say, OK, here's the new value for the variable. And it will automatically recalculate this. And we can, we're going to add a transition in here to make it a little bit smoother instead of it going choppy, jumping from one to the next, but we will add a transition in here at one point. Okay, so there we have 
the groundwork laid for the SVG. Let's actually try and load an image now. All right, so in my main JS file, I have just some basic placeholder here. DOM content loaded. When the page first loads, my percentage loaded is zero. This is the URL that I'm going to load. So inside of here, we're just going to do a fetch call. Now we could just go into the image element and set the source as this. Fine, there it is, it's loaded and it's gonna display on the page. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to monitor the progress, you have to do it through fetch. So we're going to do a fetch call here. And here's our response object coming back inside the then function. We're gonna add a catch on here shortly. Now this response object, when you're doing a fetch call, the response object doesn't come back like the promise doesn't resolve when the entire thing has loaded. So very important to realize that the response object is really just resolving when we have the headers. So when any web server is receiving a request and sending a response back, it's going to be getting the request, putting together the headers to say, this is where I'm going to send you. Those headers get sent to the browser first, and then the body follows. So when we get to this point with the then, it means we now have the headers. There we go. So at this point, we've got the headers, so we can start looking at those headers. Let's say, I want to know how big is this image? So let's say content length is going to be equal to the response.headers.get content length. So this is the content length header that tells me in bytes how big this image is that we're getting back. And this will be a string. Everything that you get out of the headers with the get method is going to be a string. So let's convert it into a number. So we add the unary plus operator in front of it, turns it from a string into a number. And now this number right here, content length, is the actual size of the file that we're downloading, whatever it is. So here it's an image, but it could be any kind of file. So I'm going to keep track of how much I've downloaded, how much of the bytes of the content length. We're going to get a reader object. So response dot body, that is the actual image. So in the response object, we have the headers, and then the body, that's going to be the actual file that's coming. Remember, this resolved when we got the headers. We're waiting for the body now, so we can say, I want to read like that. Sorry, that should be a period there. So I want to read the stream of data that's coming from the server with everything inside of there. And we will get the image in little chunks. So little chunks of data that are coming to us. It's a stream. So one after the other, things floating through down the stream to us. And we're going to do this more than once. So we're going to, let's say, we'll call a method called read chunk. That's going to be the function that we define right here, read chunk. So we get a reader and we're going to call this function once immediately. So I'm just defining the function here. It doesn't have to be here. It could be somewhere else in my code. It's not going to matter, but we keep it all together just to see what's happening. So we've got the reader. We call this and this is going to be, hey, I've just received a chunk of data from the server. So inside of here, we're going to use that reader object and we're going to call its read method. So on this thing, which is connected to the body object, read a chunk of data, please. And just like any other promise, it has a then attached to it. And the then is going to let us extract the value of what was downloaded. The value is the data itself. And there's another property in here called done, which lets us know that, hey, we're actually finished downloading it. This was the very last chunk of data. So here we go. 
So we're calling rechunk over and over and over and over again until we get to this done property. This done property is going to let us know that, oh yeah, we have actually finished it. So there will be an if statement inside of here. So when this happens, we finished downloading the file, whatever it is, whatever the resource was, we finished downloading it at this point. So I want to take the value that we've got right here. And so after the done, so this is before it's finished, while we're still downloading stuff, we want to take our downloaded, how much downloaded data there has been and add to that zero value dot byte length. So this is how big is the chunk that we just read from the stream that's coming from the server. This number right here is the total number of bytes. So this is one but one chunk added to downloaded. And then we can figure out the percentage right here by saying a percentage. The variable that we declared up here is zero. We're starting off at zero. This is now going to be math.round. We're going to round off this number and we will take downloaded divided by our uh, content length right there times 100 to turn it into an integer instead of a, a decimal value because we're rounding it off. So I want even numbers like one, two, three, four, five. I don't want 0 0.12, 0 0.25. I want the larger numbers, or the integers, sorry. Now with that percentage, we can say my save that down over here i'm going to display out here a message saying what percentage has downloaded i want to also update this to display that number so if we look back in here back in our html we're targeting the thing with the class pct text and with the id output so right here let's say that document get element by id Output, that's the paragraph. Text content is going to be equal to the PCT plus percentage downloaded. So save that. There we go, so 35%. Now, I'm also going to write out in the console here, I'm going to write out these values as this happens. Now, this is going to go very fast. Like, there. Last time we saw 35, this time we just saw 100. It's not a tiny image, but it's not massive, and I've got a very good internet connection. So I'm going to come in here, and we're going to go to a slower connection here. Yeah, fast 3G, let's do that. So when I refresh this, there we go. Okay, so we got 1%. Oh, yeah, we're getting one value. I'm missing a very important step right here. We have to keep reading the new chunks. So inside of this function read chunk, we need to call it again. We want to keep reading the stream. It's not just once, but again and again and again. There we go. So and then in the chunk here, when we are done, this is where we're going to stop and exit the function. I don't want to keep calling it. So that's why we're getting all the errors here. So there we go. There's all the percentages and we're displaying it here. If I refresh, we can see that it'll appear and goes through all the percentages. So now we just do the same thing here as we did for this. So we target that text element with the class PCT text. So same as we did here. So document query selector PCT text dot text content equals, and we'll just put our PCT there. There we go. So this is now flying through all the numbers to display it just like we want. So 
that's the displaying of the number. Now we have to do the update for the progress. And that was really just updating this one variable percentage right here. So this variable will update it. We'll update it here for the progress. You have to pick an element where you're going to update it. So this is the SVG element. So inside the SVG element, we're going to set the value of that CSS property. And we'll do it right here. And progress. Now it doesn't have to be exactly on this one, could be on the SVG element or something else inside of it. But on that element, we're going to update the property. So style set property. There we go. Style. So this is like going into an element on the page and we're creating right here a style attribute this is what we're doing and inside this style attribute we're setting the value for this property so right here style set property and the property that we want to set is going to be percentage and the value is going to be this new one this PCT And there it is. So we're setting that variable, that CSS variable to the percentage, and then it's going to cycle through there, loading everything. So this is the monitoring of the progress. Now, the only thing we don't have here is we're not actually putting the image onto the page. Now, if I assigned the href or the source value to this image tag, it would display it immediately, but we're not tracking the progress. And if you want to use the thing that you've just downloaded, the blob data that you just downloaded, you want to take that and you want to put it onto the page, that's what we need to change now. Or what we need to use now is this thing right here, this response body that we're cycling through, that we're getting all the data from. We want to take that, assemble all those chunks together and turn it into a blob object. So taking all the data all at once. So let's create another variable up here at the top called, let's call it chunks. So remember, this value is a chunk of data and we're going to add it to this chunks array. As we go through one after the other, looking at each one of these items or each one of these chunks of data, we're going to add the value into that array. So just before we call read chunk again, right down here, we'll say chunks dot push value. There we go. So reading the chunks one after the other, one chunk of data, one chunk of data, one chunk of data, all of it assembled together, and then we're putting it into this array where we will reassemble it when we get to this point, but only when we get to this point, when we have all the actual data prepared or gathered. Once we have all the data gathered in chunks, now we can create the blob object and use this to assign to the image element. So a new blob and it wants an array, so chunks. That's our data. And then, okay, what is the, the thing that we're getting here? It's an image. So we'll say type is image slash JPEG, I believe it is. There we go. So that's the blob. So when we're done, it means this thing has returned true. There is no more values to be added to the chunks array. We take the chunks array, turn it into a blob object. And if you've ever fetched an image to display it on the page, you know what we need to do next, which is create a new blob URL. And inside of here, we'll say URL, create object URL, and we pass the blob in. There it is. That is going to be a URL that points to wherever this is stored in memory. So right now, this isn't on the page. It's not in the console. It's not anywhere except in memory. So somewhere the browser has all the data for this image 
sitting together in memory. We're going to create a URL that points to that location in memory. Once we have that, now I can say, hey, you know what? This image right here, its source is the URL that points to that spot in memory. So we'll find the image element on the page inside of the image. So let's say let our const image equals and document query selector inside the thing with the ID image is our image element and its source is going to be this URL that we just created right here. So that URL should be able to load on the page once we get up to 100%. Oh, I combined two steps here into one. Yes, I should be <laughs> doing that and then image.source equals URL. There we go. Okay, so if done. Oh! Okay, somehow I've put this outside of my function right here. I put this inside of the read chunk, but this really, these need to be happening inside of this right here. So inside the reader read, this is where we're sh we should be doing this. So calling read chunk again and pushing the chunks. So inside of that, so let me just move these two lines up inside of there. And yeah, there we go. And there's the image loaded as well. So we're going up to 100%, we're getting our image, and we're displaying it on the page. All right, so there we have it. There is the loading of the image using fetch to monitor the progress and using SVG and updating the SVG through script to display the progress. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Uh, if you're looking for a copy of the code, you'll find that down in the description as well. There'll be a link to the code gist that has these two files, the, C the uh, JavaScript and the HTML. And as always, thanks for watching.